All right, guys, uh, we are here today with Jessica Ascari. Jessica is a social media influencer, a mother, a cooker. <laughs> uh, what else, Jessica? You tell me what I you mean, are. I mean, a psychiatrist, according to my kids. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's all around, but um, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Very Thanks good. for coming. Very good. So, so your career or your trajectory and, and, and your beginnings uh, are very interesting to me. We were, we were discussing some stuff before we kicked off the podcast. And um, I want you to kind of walk me through your life before your Instagram climb and, and everything that's gone on with that. Well, I mean, it's, it's a real roller coaster. I started off um, going to school and thinking that I wanted to go into fashion. At the exact same time, I got a job with an amazing amazing producer at the time. He was uh, just a literary agent who landed uh, the movie Matrix, the script right on his desk. Which is awesome. Which uh, right off the bat, I learned from him, um, you know, take a chance. He was the only one who took a chance on the Wachowski brothers. And um, I mean, it turned into the movie Matrix and it was named something else also. But from there, I was with him right from the get go. And um, as he grew, the company grew and he gave me more responsibilities. And at the age of- Were you, were you on the set of The Matrix? No, I was day? not. I was invited out actually to go out um, to the third one when they were shooting it, but it was in Australia and I was pregnant. Uh, so, <laughs> did you ever so meet the Wachowski brothers? My, yes, I have met the Wachowski cool. brothers. It was very, very cool. cool. I've met a lot of people. I met um, a ton of different faces. Um, I have to say that they are really cool in person. They're not that facade that we have that they're stuck up and snobby. There are so many of these actors and actresses that are just like us and they're so fun to talk to. Right. I've had so many of these actors come over to me and just have regular conversations. And then my boss looked at me, he's like, I think he thought you were somebody else. I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> like, I'll take so, it. So who's, who's the, the most A-list celebrity that you've met in your time? I have met, I've met Brad Pitt. I've met um, Simon <laughs> that's Kimberg. Right that's like every girl's dream. I've met um, Simon Kimberg. I mean, believe it or not, he's not my type. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you see my husband, you'll know my type. Um, but I've met um, Charlie Theron. I've met... Um, I mean, the it was huge. I've met from people that were casted on pilots to A-listers. Mm -hmm. And I always, believe it or not, thought that my boss was the coolest. Because mm -hmm. till this day, like, if he's invited to, like, the Emmys or something, like, he'll have to go buy a suit that day. That's he's cool. so, like, so grounded and his feet are on the ground. And still to this day that he's he's huge now. Mm -hmm. so but he, but he comes from very humble beginnings very and he's so still he still lives in queens and he's still like he's still the same person that i met years ago so as he was growing the company um at about 16 and a half years old he came over to me and he said to me i want to make you a junior manager at 16 16 That's so awesome. i had gone to certain meetings so where, you're not even out of high school no i was still in high school oh, i was geez. still in high school and um yeah from high school i would go there like people were going to the mall after high school and i was going straight to work Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I had a lot of fun and his wife, we became a family, his wife, is super sweet, mm -hmm. um, their daughter. And from there it just grew and I did it all the way until my uh, third pregnancy. Um, okay. so into college and so, then, so yeah, into college, yeah, exactly. Into college. He came to my wedding. Like it was like a whole yeah. thing. Um, it came to my son's bris. Like, I mean, like we, be, we stayed in touch. Yeah. I, I was doing it. I had to start slowly backing away only because the company got a lot larger. They all opened offices in Hollywood and he started hiring people and it became a huge production company slash directing slash. I mean, he was doing books and comic books and I mean everything. Right. And by my third kid, I had to kind of step back. And oh yeah. To be I know, a mother. Exactly. I know that every, there is a possibility. Everybody can do it all. I personally just wanted to be there for my kids, like at every moment. Understandable. So I said, so this back. is, you had your third kid, uh, when? So I was in the industry for about 10 years, okay. I would have to say. And then, um, I stepped away and I just, you know, I became a mom, which was filling. I mean, of course, low pay. <laughs> but <laughs> to no pay, yeah. but, um, no, I was there with them and I just wanted to be a very hands-on mom, you know, everything. And then, from there, which by the way, being a mother is a harder job than any job you could go out absolutely. There and get by far. I have, I think, my entire marriage, I have been sick maybe once with the flu, and yeah. my husband had to stay home from work one day to take care of the three of them. 
and he begged me to get better. Yes, yes. <laughs> I can tell you from firsthand experience. I have three kids. I beg my my wife cannot go down. She goes down. My we're, husband we're says screwed. to me, he goes, he tells the kids also, he's like, you cannot get mommy angry. You're not allowed to get her sick. Yeah. We need mommy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, so yeah, I mean, I stepped away. I was mommy in full mommy mode until about. Honestly, about four years ago, okay. um, I did start dabbling into the fashion world. Um, I so this is touch. four years ago you started yes, that? Yes, okay. and, and how it happened is I stayed in touch with some of the actors' wives and some of their assistants, and I was doing some fashion for them, you know, styling them and all that stuff just for, like, fun. Right. And then one day one of them said to me, like, Jess, why don't you try Instagram? I'm like, what's that? <laughs> So, and this is only four years this ago. This is only about four years Jeez. ago. I had no idea what Instagram was. I had never heard of it. I yeah. had not, nothing. Yeah. And my sister's a journalist and she never even said anything to me about this. I was like, all right, you know what? Let me check this out. I went on and I was like, oh, wow, this looks like fun. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. posting a picture, showing off where you guys are and sharing everything and this and that. But I noticed at that time there were food bloggers and then there were lifestyle bloggers and then there were fashion bloggers. And I was like, okay, but I do all of that. Yeah. Like I cook. And I want to mm -hmm. share my recipes and I travel and I want to share my, my lifestyle where mm -hmm. I've been and, you know, yeah. how to get good promos at, at yeah. hotels and stuff yeah. like that. And I have kids and I wanted to share a family. So I was like, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to mix it up. So I started the gram about four years ago and that's exactly what it was. And what I did was also is I have a daughter, she's my, my middle one. And she's my biggest critic, I have to say, <laughs> especially 14 going on they 24. Usually are, oh right? my gosh. And she came over to me about two years ago and, and I said to her, I said, you know, Sky, come on Instagram with me. And she goes, no, all my friends follow you. Oh, and I was like, light bulb, you know, if they're following me, I got to make sure that I'm being a good mentor to them. Mm -hmm. Like I have to make sure that, you know, I have young minds watching me and yeah. reading my captions. So I was like, you know what, let's turn it up a little bit. And some of these captions, like, especially the days that she comes in, she's like, oh, there was drama in school or whatever. I'll post up a picture and the caption will have nothing to do with fashion. It'll be like, you know, believe in yourself. And, you know, if, mm -hmm. if a girl doesn't want to sit next to you, there's 20 other tables you can sit next to or, you know, things like that. And I got so much feedback. I got so many DMs from like moms saying to me, like my daughter follows you. Moms and, are yeah, all over, moms all over wow. the things. And wow. then my, my daughter follows you and, you know, thank you for that and this and that and that. And I was like, whoa. And then of course it grew out to be even more like when I shared recipes, which is a big thing on Fridays. Mm -hmm, yeah. And um, I have people from Canada, from Iceland, from this and that. And they're like, we missed your story. And I'll look and I'll be like, they messaged me at three in the morning. I'm like, where are you from? They're like, Iceland. I'm like, holy mother. <laughs> like, you're like all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's been a lot of fun. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. And I'm glad that I'm able to share everything. The whole purpose of this was to be another friend, mm -hmm. like right. a social media friend where you right. can tap into and see the like, you know, Real life happens to everybody. It's not just the glitz and glam. I share everything with them. The good and the bad. The good and the bad. And that's the reason. It's because you don't want them to think that the world is only about posing and taking a great picture. You know, everybody has their roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Everybody yeah. has some bad days and down days. And honestly, it's probably the, not the down, uh, the it's it's the bad times that people probably relate to relate to more than the good times because absolutely you know everyone's trying to find relation uh, in, in with respect to the things that they're dealing with that are difficult in their life and and what an amazing time in the world that that you can independently go on this app post all this information and the next thing you know 50,000 people are, are following you and you're you're doing more for people than you could have ever done 10 years ago. Absolutely. Very you know, cool. There is, I was I'm mentioning to you guys that um, my oldest one um, has a special needs. They yeah. don't know what it is. He's not on the spectrum or anything. But one thing that we know for a fact that is that he loves music and he learns through music. Yeah. So I've been very open about it. I'm on it. I'm on social media. I tell people that, you know, you don't have to be afraid there are so many communities that there are kids with needs and the parents, it's the truth. The parents don't want to talk about it. Don't want to bring it to the surface because they're scared for either for their other kids, they'll be, you know, shamed or banned from yep. the social settings and things like that. And so if they don't talk about it out in public, at least they find me. And I have had, have had DMS come in and say like, you know, 
I'm scared to share my story or to get certain services because I have other kids in my son or daughter's school. And then their friends will be like, oh, your brother or sister has issues and you're not cool or whatever right. it is. And when they see me do that, you know, talk about it so publicly, mm -hmm. they're like, we finally went and asked for services or more services. Or I've had parents come to me and say, I haven't wanted to open that folder up for mm -hmm. my son, but now I'm going to go ask, what do you suggest? Like this is his, you know, problem or whatever. And it's amazing. It's mm -hmm. amazing. I'm not just hitting on that fashion nail, but mm -hmm. it's all over. And it's great because I get to help everybody out in different facets in life. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'd imagine once, once you do encourage them or give them the support to open up like you have, that a lot of their concerns really don't come to fruition. Like, you know, like they're worried about other children in the school and maybe being bullied and stuff, but they probably find that other kids are really supportive and stuff. And the, the experience, while they were afraid of having a negative experience has really been a positive one for the most part. Absolutely. I had a mom actually just last week, believe it or not, um, reach out to me. She's from Oklahoma. And she was talking to me about how her son has made a really good friend in class and um, he's deaf. And uh, her son happens to be the only child in a class of 22 kids mm -hmm. that will sit with this kid for lunch and things like that. And mm -hmm. she goes, you know, I hear your story. I've been following you for a while. Is there, do you have any suggestions? I said, absolutely. Go to the guidance counselor and say that, you know, we should do a friendship circle. We should do something. And um, this was just last week. And last mm -hmm. night I messaged her and I was like, Hey, what's up? You know, I keep certain DMS. You can kind of like yeah. put them in primary mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. And she's like, Oh, I'm so glad you reached out. I actually talked to the guidance counselor and the school has a break now, but next week we're mm -hmm. starting a friendship circle uh, that weekly the kids have to have the, the classroom has um, the phone numbers of all the, cl of the classmates. Mm -hmm. And every night, another student has to call that child and <sighs> they're chaining it mm -hmm. to talk about their day, if they need help with homework and things like that. And then during lunchtime, they have to have a minimum of three kids sit with each other and have a discussion group. Wow. So it's amazing. Yeah. And that's just from No, that's from your suggestion. So, yeah. But this is this is sort of the power of social media. And these are probably things that people don't even see. Uh, you know, a lot of people probably at surface level would pull up a page like yours and think, you know, it's just another person running around with with all these, you know, Hermes, Gucci, et cetera, products. But but the reality of the situation is is it it's probably the honesty that drove your page to being you know, what it is with regards to the following. I mean, if you're posting things, first of all, people love food, people love fashion. But when you put those honest things out there, like we talked about, then you get people who share in those, those things in their own life that don't know where, where else to maybe find someone who's dealing with the same issue. And they find their way to you through a DM and, and you could do things like that, which is awesome. Um, what do you attribute the growth of your page to? If you had to think, I mean, at what point did it explode and people start following you like crazy? I think honestly, it's the authenticity, but yep. it started off with having, I am, I'm truly blessed with having a husband that stands by me mm -hmm. and he, as much as I am in the public eye, he is such a private person. So there's that, you know, respect there. Yep. He's like, I respect honey. You want to put everything out there, but you know, you have to respect my space. And I do. So you get like little glimpse of him. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have had him as a backbone and, um, my friends are the ones who, when I came to them and I said, guys, I want to start this just like, we are behind you. So I am very lucky to have mm -hmm. some really, really true friends that follow me and they give suggestions and, you know, and, and they're up there with no matter what post I put. Some of my friends are like, Jess, we're tired at night. We just gonna go check, 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 check. <laughs> you know, a little comment there. But um, I would say anybody who wants to start this, be authentic. Um, don't just post a picture. You know, a picture is fun to look at, like mm -hmm. a magazine, but think about it. A magazine, you look at a picture and then you you're just, on to the next page. You're on to yeah. the next page. Yeah. You know, have a story behind you mm -hmm. and let it come from you because people want to relate to you. Mm -hmm. People want to know who you are. And if you have something relatable to them, then they'll follow you. Right. You know, so right. as you said, I mix it all up. So if you don't relate to fashion or my fashion ideology, right. you'll follow me because of recipes. If you don't like to cook, you'll follow me. If you have kids, if you mm -hmm. don't like, if you don't have kids, you'll follow me for travel. Right. I've blended everything in there do you do you tap into hashtags a lot is that do you attribute a lot of your your exposure to hashtags or, or geotagging or anything along those lines so i have to say when i first started i got a lot of um 
comments, people were like, you know, you should hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. So I used to, but if you look within, I think the last like year or so, my, my posts are more, um, more about tagging the company that I'm working with or mm -hmm. a company that I want to get interested into, mm -hmm. or I want them to f show some interest. Hashtags are very minimum. I've, it's become because by now, if you're my follower, you're following me, right. you know, and it's now word of mouth. Right. Um, I have gone places where I get recognized and a girl will recognize me out of like, let's say three other girls that are in the room with her. Right. And she'll say, oh, you don't know her? That's the little fashions. And then immediately they'll take out their phone. And so it's more of like word of <laughs> That's mouth. That's so funny. So you're, you're basically to a degree famous. It's, it's wild. It's, it's crazy. By they, actually, <laughs> they actually say, and it's funny because you're, you, you dealt with people in Hollywood. They're saying to a certain degree, Hollywood is losing its relevancy in that you, there are people on YouTube that are making more money than actors oh, yeah. are making. Oh yeah, there are beauty blog. There are beauty, I shouldn't even say bloggers, influencers mm -hmm. that are on YouTube and they will crack a video on their, I mean, it could be either something very basic mm -hmm. or something crazy and wild mm -hmm. and they will hit five, six million. Yeah, and, and that's all they get paid for it. And big then, money. Oh yeah, big money. They're making, I mean, they're up there right by Julia Roberts. Oh, I yeah. mean, it's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And you know, and you can imagine what she, all the years of the acting and everything she went through, she lands a script and they're just on there on YouTube making one video and boom. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to, to, to make it in Hollywood, there's there's one Julia Roberts, yes. just like you said. There's one. And for every one, there's a million people trying to be that person. And back in the day, you needed agents and and everything else to navigate Hollywood to get, you know, you had to take your headshots and, and they, had to, they had to navigate the landscape to get you roles, right? Yeah, and it's, it's, it's crazy. Now, even like, when I first started, um, I thought like, okay, if I want to do this, I have to do this right. I got to get a manager and I have to have an assistant and I have to have, it's so not like that. No. It's so not like that. And I've met so many bloggers out there in all different types of fields and stuff. And they, they even tell me just, you know, the best shots are from her iPhone. That's mm -hmm. so like funny. they have no assistant, no manager. I personally don't have a manager. I tried an assistant, didn't work out. Mm -hmm. I have such a crazy life. She's yeah. like, I can't keep up with you. So, <laughs> I mean, it lasted a week. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's insane what can be done with just an iPhone. Yeah. Well, so do you go out there and actually solicit business or do people at this point come to you? So in the beginning, of course, you have to put yourself out there and yeah. then you have to do a media kit, a press kit, anything that will you know start. And then the smaller you are, of course, the harder it is to get into the door. Mm -hmm. But once you're in the door, you just keep knocking. And um, right now, I would say I have a really great um, variety mm -hmm. of food brands, um, Hanky Panky is one of my favorite brands right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually meeting up with them tomorrow, but it's like, it's, it's a wide variety. They come knocking on my door. And then, I mean, it's two and two. There are some companies, of course, that still don't know even I exist. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I reach out to them. Um, it's meeting the right person at the right time right. and having, having something that they're looking for. You know, because they can just hire any blogger, but mm -hmm. they're always looking for something different. So how does the business side of it work? Let's say I work for Louis Vuitton and I call you up and I say, hey, uh, I've got this product. You know, we're launching a new bag, let's say in January. And I wanted to contact local influencers and get the product out there. Like, how does it work? Do they, do they so say? There are many, many, many ways of doing this. So there are campaigns, there are photo shoots. you you get paid for in feed posts. You get paid for just a story. You get paid for several stories for several posts. Um, it depends. I think it all depends on the brand and how much they're willing to put out there. Um, bigger brands will offer you a month worth of a campaign so it's like every other day to shoot something say something right. about them and they give you the products of course you so it's almost like choose. you're on a retainer like we'll it's, give you yeah, x amount yeah, of dollars yeah. per month and this is how many posts exactly we and then of that course year. you can't they'll tell you like oh we have competitors you can't sign up with the other competitors mm -hmm. which makes sense because you don't right. want to go out there and say like 
oh, this is the best <laughs> lipstick. And then the next day you're like, oh no, this is the best lipstick, yeah. you know, because then you also lose. Well, that's so you don't funny. want to, like you said, authenticity. You don't want to look like a exactly. sellout. You're doing it exactly. because it's a passion, not the money is great. Exactly. But if you, yeah, exactly. I didn't start this for, I mean, I didn't, it happened to turn into a business, but mm -hmm. I didn't start it for a business. I started it to connect with people. And if I want to keep that, I have to show that I'm being authentic. So mm -hmm. exactly. I can't go on and be like, this is the best product I'm using today. And then two days later, like, oh no, this is mm -hmm. the best product. You but know? also to that point, you should be testing both products. Yes, I do. And, and then, I do. And, and you I should say, say that look, out loud. I personally believe, you know, let's say I'm testing between two different companies, company A, company B. Let's say I think company B has the better product. I go to company B and I say, look, I, I personally believe you have a better product. I'd like to, you know, work something out here. And then you develop a whole thing. What, what amazes me is how, how the landscape has changed and how companies now have to allocate in a marketing budget to social media influencers. Oh, yes. Which is amazing. I have companies knocking on the door saying that we just started a media, a media group when we hired somebody as a media team. And it's like these years they didn't have. And a lot of designers are also losing money because they've been spending their money on magazines yeah. and on campaigns. Mm -hmm. That and dies. Yes, Where's that going? Yes, now? and it's happened. I, there's a few designers I just heard last week that they're not even doing their fashion week um, because they didn't have enough funds. It's crazy wow. because everybody's tapping into the influencers. The influencers mm -hmm. are now filling up the first three rows of all the fashion. It's crazy. It, the fashion shows. It's oh, crazy. Yeah. You'll see the influencers walking down the fashion shows. Really? Yeah, it's the models have been pushed aside. That's you know, so it's, it used to be the six foot twig and, you know, all this stuff. And now you'll see a variety and different it's, but I love it. It's amazing, especially yeah. for someone who has kids because showing my daughter, look, you know, yeah. you could look like anything. You could be anything. Just, you just have to put your heart into it. It's possible. Possibilities are endless. That's so crazy. I was at dinner, uh, probably three months ago in the city. I forget exactly where I was. It might've been. Mastro's or something like that. It was one block south of Central Park South, so 56th Street or something like that, by by the Apple, the first Apple store, the New York City Apple store. And we're out to dinner, and there's a table. It's about the size of this conference table, and there's like 15 people around the table. And every time they dropped food on this table, the phones came out. No, no, no it was crazy. It was the phones came out. There was lights. <laughs> <laughs> the the waiters all dropped the food at the same time. There was like fifteen people My waiting poor on this husband, table. That's what he deals with it me was, all the time. It was crazy, <laughs> but but it was a table of influencers. Oh, that's so crazy. It's a so now restaurants are DMing influencers. That's what we're doing and too. Getting I've been every, doing that and getting everybody. And this is all. Yeah, this is totally something that you should one hundred percent be doing, especially if you're doing the cooking. Is getting people in, and then they 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 serve that table probably their best plates. And then they just they just go nuts. Oh, absolutely! We've been hashtag. I've been to restaurants with my husband, and mm -hmm. you know, just like date night dinner, and we sit down, we order everything, and then I get a DM. It's happened. I got a DM a few weeks ago with uh, two other bloggers that are friends of mine. I'm actually doing a restaurant um, blogger tomorrow of a luncheon that we're being invited to, right? Um, and that we're being hosted to. So we go to the same restaurant, and I tell my I tell my girlfriends, I'm like, guys, I've been here before. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I've been here with, you know, with my husband and I know what to order and things like that. And then they're hosting us. So they bring mm -hmm. out everything. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Our plates did not look like that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all because like, you know, they request, they're like, oh, we'll host you. Can you guys come oh, yeah. in? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll give you everything, drinks. I mean, everything you yep. can imagine um, just for an in-feed post picture and, you know, a tag and some pictures with the food and things mm -hmm. like that. And, oh yeah, everybody so is funny. eating it up. Everybody. That's so cool. Is it when, when you get contacted by a company, is it scripted or they say, Hey, we just like you to help promote our brand or our product. And they kind of let you do your thing. No. So I have come, I mean, knock on wood, I've come to a point where I can actually turn down or I can tweak what they're asking. So mm -hmm. if they'll ask me like, Oh, you know, we want three pictures, carousel and stories and da, 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 da. And I'm like looking, okay. I'm like, hold on a second. Let me look at your site or tell me what, you know, mm -hmm. product or place or whatever. And I'll look and I'll be like, all right, this doesn't fit my feed, you know, it doesn't fit my aesthetic. So I'll contact them back and I'll be like, listen, we'll come in, we'll do a brunch instead of a whole lunch. And, you know, we'll do one in feed post and we'll do a few stories for you. Mm -hmm. and we'll tag you and things like that. So 
thank God I'm there where I can kind of like tell them, you know, mm-hmm. as you said, like script it the way that right. I want it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's how it is normally. They'll message you and they'll be like, you know, this is what we want. This is what we can offer you. And then they'll pick a date and a time. And normally it'd be like, they'll shut down the area. So when you're taking your pictures, right. there's nobody else yeah, in the yeah, area. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, everyone is doing media marketing now. It's so crazy. It's totally changed. You said, I have a question. You said that when you first got started, you did media kits and stuff. What Can you explain what that is? What's yeah, a so a media kit is, well, in the very beginning, I had like nothing on it, but um, a media kit is basically to showcase what you have done. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the press kit is all the press that you've done. So like things that places you've showed up to, pop-ups you've been invited to, companies right. you've you've worked with and collaborated with. So the longer you do this and the more doors open for you, mm-hmm. the more you can put on it. So like I mentioned, hanky panky, I can put hanky panky on my press kit, you mm-hmm. know, things like that. And then when you knock on, when you're the one who's knocking on people's doors, mm-hmm. that's what you supply them with. And they look, I'm like, oh, okay, they're, you know, this influencer is reputable. She's worked with different companies mm-hmm. and this is what she can offer. And they look at the pictures that you've done and things like that. And do yeah. they, do they ever ask you about your reach? Like, do they say, Absolutely. okay, we want to see Absolutely. previous posts, so how far they've gone. Instagram is being a pain. So what they're yeah. doing is every few months they're changing up. They're coming. I think they're bored. They're coming up with new ways of like harming us influencers. Yeah. And um, what they're doing now is that um, on my feed right now, I don't see it, but a lot of new followers are telling me that they can't see my How like many count. Likes. Exactly. Yes. And so it just says like a name and others. I, exactly. I so I think them. yours is like that. Yes. Right. I'll show you. Hold on. So I wonder if it's people that are just starting Instagram to follow Mm -hmm. because mine still doesn't do that. (laughs) And it's nice because I like the It just says Ron Lanzalotta and others. Oh, so see, yeah. Yeah. No, so mine still has the count. So what's happening is because companies that are just starting out doing this marketing Mm -hmm. media, um, they know that that's going on. So they, they can't tap into your account and look to see your numbers because they can't do that. So they'll ask you, can you, and it's happened to me, can you, send me the link of your last story with your swipe up and show me the amount of reaches or the swipes that you got. Wow. Because if they're trying to help, they're tr- you're trying to help them push a product. Mm-hmm. They want to see how many people are watching you yeah. and how many people are going to swipe up to that product. Right, right. Which makes sense. Listen, they don't want to throw money away. Yeah, they but, need to know that they're giving their money to the right but person. Yeah, which is where stories come in. And I think that stories, believe it or not, are a lot more important than posts. Mm-hmm. Because the posts, you don't want to just put a picture up there and it'll mess up your aesthetic if you have nothing else to post. You know, but if you have stories, people are watching. They want to see like a story unfold. You know, Mm -hmm. they want to follow you around the city. They want to follow you, you know, to places and to restaurants. They don't just want to see a picture. Mm -hmm. You actually use it as a story. Like you just said a story unfold. So you'll actually, if you feel like you have something going on in your day, that's an interesting story. That's interesting. Then you'll use it as a story. Absolutely. So you're strategic about it. Were you always strategic about it or... Did that kind of evolve as you? It just evolves. Got I'll be honest with you, because when I first started, I thought it was just about taking a picture and posting, you know, and that was it. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, that was my whole day. Now what? Like right. one picture is like the whole day. Right. Like right. I did a lot more than, than just <laughs> right. one picture standing right. in the middle of the street. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I was like, you know what? I I had to get my kids permission also, and mm-hmm. I you know started sharing a story. So yesterday, for example, we got invited to a pop up. My son and I, my youngest one. Mm-hmm. So Slumo, which I love, by the way, okay. everybody has got to check it out. It's like the slime museum. Yes, I saw um, it. Yeah. Right. It was so much fun. Um, so I told my youngest son, I was like, listen, we got invited to this pop-up. We're going and you're going to be on Instagram. <laughs> and he goes to me, okay, mom, but can you not put a picture of me? I'm like, that's fine. Nobody wants to see a picture. But he wants to see the actual right, experience. Right. Yeah. And so from the minute we walked in, it was just stories. And yeah, I got, again, I got a lot of DMs. Stro- are Jess, is strollers allowed in there? Uh, is it good for smaller kids? Is there a smell wow. in there you know mm-hmm. is it kid how kid friendly what age things like that how long were you there for how long is the experience things like that and that's what it is as mm-hmm. opposed to just putting a picture you know yeah. a story tells you yeah. so much more information they're saying also um like now because there's different parts of instagram right so you have uh you have stories you have the posts and then you have uh, tv the instagram tv, TV they're which saying, i've done too they're saying tv is what they want people doing more of. Yes. Uh, so that actually has a lot more organic reach. How do you use TV? So you create um, an IGTV video, which <laughs> I've done for beauty. 
Um, and the campaigns that I work with for beauty kind of make more sense for me to do the IGTV because it's a whole tutorial. So, you know, it's much easier than to just do a quick video or even just a post. You got to mm -hmm. show the products, the names, how you put them on, how right. they look on the face. So you do a natural lighting because they got to see what you really look like, not with filters, natural right. lighting, IGTV video, and then you load it up. And when you load it up, you get a much larger reach um, than just your followers, right. which is really great. But yeah, it takes, but I will tell you, it takes a lot more time and effort to do it. Um, so you'll see a lot of bloggers doing it, but not as much as posts and stories. Are you looking at other social media platforms? I have. Um, I kind of fell off of looking at a few that I really thought were authentic. I met them in person. I was like, oh. okay, this was a facade. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't the only ones I've met. I, I have met a handful of bloggers that I actually became friends with, right. um, which is really nice because we talk outside the realm, yeah, you know, like right. mom and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But then there are the ones that kind of inspired me and I started, you know, based on them. And mm -hmm. then it was like, wait a minute, like, you know, I'll, out. yeah, I, I've met them at um, Neiman Marcus opened up in Hudson Yards and we got invited. I met a bunch of them. They invited. It was an influencer night. I went over to one of them. I won't say who. I went over to them and I'm like, hi. And I'm like, I follow you. I've been following you for a while now. Mm -hmm. And she literally, her head was in her phone like on Instagram. Mm -hmm. She took one side look at me and she goes, okay. And she walked away. Five seconds later, you look on her Instagram. She's like, I'm at Neiman Marcus and I'm at the Hudson oh, Yards. And I'm like, oh, bull. <laughs> like, I'm like, I just met you five seconds yeah, ago. And it's yeah. like, that must happen a lot though, right? Oh, it or, does. Or... It does. It does. And it's sad because mm -hmm. it's like, you're putting up this whole, it's really a facade. Yeah. You know, but I am what you get. You're authentic. You, you, I can you, tell you right now. You're you'll talk to... For someone like you who's passionate, who started because they're passionate and they built it up just because they enjoyed doing it, I would imagine that stuff like that happens a lot, but you have to be very, just go lucky and like, you know, you can't let that kind of stuff get on your nerves because no, there's probably just, so many instances like oh that. Oh my God. I mean, there's, it, it ha if not, it happens every day because I get invited to a lot of pop-ups and I'm not the only influencer right. there. Yeah, right. So you end up talking to a bunch of other influencers and some of them are really nice mm -hmm. and some of them are just so way out there mm -hmm. and you would never think to connect them with who they portray on Instagram. It's insane. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you considering going, I mean, you should start a YouTube channel if you're doing this stuff with the food and everything. So I've had a crew come over to me. And you should me. take your audience that you have on Instagram and push them to YouTube so that you have a page that has 50 plus thousand it's followers true. there too. And it, and it's huge there when, and you know, it comes hand in hand, the YouTube followers and mm -hmm. the Instagram is huge. And we don't know if Instagram is going to be here. No, with what's yeah, going on with the algorithm, yeah, exactly. they want you to, so with they so here basically Instagram wants to capture all the money that influencers are making. So if an influencer is making, you know, a million dollars a year, being an influencer, that's a million dollars in ad revenue that Facebook could be reporting to Wall Street. Correct. That Correct. they'd rather put in their pocket. Exactly. So they gave it the, uh, and now that it's a publicly traded company, they need to answer it to Wall Street, unfortunately. And um, as a result, they're, they're slowly pulling back the reach of organic posts and stuff. And I'm sure, so I have, I have a buddy in South Florida who's got, like five, I think he's got 550,000 followers. And he, he expressed to me that, you know, over the years from, from when it was fully organic, his reach was insane. He would make, he would make a post and it would go to a few million people. Um, today, if he does the same post, it, it hits a couple hundred thousand. You I'm know? sure. I, I believe in this black hole that Instagram has mm -hmm. that like, so for example, for me, Saturday, I shut down. Saturdays, there are, there will be That's no, day. that's my day. There will be no posts. There will be no stories. Mm -hmm. Saturday sundown. You'll, um, hi, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> and I always notice that on, um, Sunday there, like from the morning, normally every morning, everybody's like, where are you? And I'm like, okay, good morning. Sunday morning. I have the slowest reach of people. Really? Yes. And it's because I didn't post anything the day before. No stories. No so nothing. they like it's, consistency. That, that quickly, 24 there hours. is that black hole. And I've had mm -hmm. other bloggers that are friends of mine that are, that have been in the industry for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And they're like that one day or even two days if they take a digital detox 
and they come back and it's like they're in that black hole and they're like, where are my likes? Where are my followers? It's got to be Where's part it? of the algorithm. Yeah, that's what it is. So it's have, you ever, the have you ever found a hole in the algorithm? So of course you have to post every day. I would say if, but the thing with me is I, I don't want to fall into that trap. If I don't have something good to post, stories are there all the time because I mean, I'm alive and I'm awake. You're going to see yeah. all the stories. Yeah. But if I don't have a good post, I don't want to ruin my aesthetic by just posting a post. Yeah, everything because, on your page looks very, very good. There's you. not like one post where it's like what was she thinking with thank this? you but that's but that's what it is like i don't want to just post just to be like all right you know i got to keep up with the algorithm i'm gonna post so i am one of those that like i won't go into that i won't mm -hmm. do it mm -hmm. um i suffer for it but you know what i'm doing what i'm doing still and when it comes to for me the most important is when it comes to working with companies they will look at my page as a whole. Right. So they'll be like, all right, there's nothing, you know, stupid there or there's mm -hmm. nothing just so she can fill in that, you know, that block of that day. Yeah. Which for me is more important than what algorithm thinks of me. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, they're making it a lot harder and harder. So I heard of, uh, there was a hole in the algorithm once where if you tagged yourself in Singapore, every, everybody saw your post. So if there, there is that thing in New York City also, if you tag New York City, uh -huh. then everyone in New York will see your post. Really? Yeah. So I don't know if it, now that it's out so, there yeah. on the podcast. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> but um, YouTube is, yeah, YouTube and IGTV. So here's, what, here's what I'm thinking. I mean, you see what's going on with Netflix and you see what's going on with, you know, Disney Plus and all these streaming services. And I don't know my about you, but my kids, my kids are young. They're, they're, they're under, they're five and under. They don't watch TV in the sense that we did growing up. Like we would wake up in the morning and Saved by the Bell was on at, you know, 6.30 in the morning. Oh we'd, yeah, uh, oh we'd my watch, God. We'd watch Saved by the Bell, oh, Zach Norris, right? And, and then after that was ESPN until the bus came. I got on the no, bus. everything is iPad, Netflix. Now it's all on demand. First of all, I have to say and this it's right YouTube. Now, it's Fortnite Mare. Isn't yes. the first time yes. the number on Fortnite yes. Mare? Is, well, that's another thing. Gaming's oh my, like becoming gaming a big Twitch. Huge. So they're saying like, it's 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 a it's a wild world. Twitch is really just like Instagram, and the people on Twitch are making a ton of money, but they're saying Twitch is going to become not just a gaming platform but a streaming platform altogether. I think it sort of already has. I heard where this. you could it's, get. I think on they've already a, started it. With you it, could though. do your cooking shows on Twitch, so you could be. This is where it gets like really high level. You could come. You could have a YouTube channel, a Twitch channel, your Instagram. And you could have all these platforms and be pushing all your follow followers Bring in between. You, in. It, it, TikTok as, is huge too now. TikTok is yes. TikTok's huge, huge, but it's mm -hmm. young. It's a young generation thing. But you know what? It's very smart. And I'll tell you why. Because there are people that are a lot older, either my age or a lot older than me, that are either getting on there. They are and, getting on there, and mm -hmm. then you have all the young generation following them. Yep, and the young yeah. generation is what is your audience because you bring them in. Well, think that that young generation, if they're 18, 19 years old in five to seven years, they're probably going to be buying a house, right? Exactly. So exactly. on the real estate side with what we do to tie it all back to that, these are the things we have to pay attention to. Do you, as an influencer, do you think about that stuff? Like the future, this is where it's going or are you just kind of along for the ride? Oh, absolutely. And no, absolutely. I want to create, I wanted to create, my husband told me like about two years ago, he's like, all right, where are you going with this? <laughs> I understand we're getting like, you know, we're going to restaurants and we're going to hotels and they're like, is that what we're going to do? Like, is that yeah. like every time we want to go on vacation, they'd be like, oh wait, let me reach out to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. And I told him, I said, no, I want to create a platform, honestly, to be able to just like a business, believe it or not, mm -hmm. give it off yeah. to my kids. Yeah. You know, I have three kids and all three of them are in three different directions. Mm -hmm. um, one's obsessed with music, which could be huge. Oh, um, yeah. My daughter, she wants to be a doctor. God help us all. And then <laughs> <laughs> my youngest one wants to be a gamer. There you and, go. Um, that's a thing now. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that's a huge thing. I think he'd make more money than the doctor. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Like, us growing up, if you said, I want to be a gamer, you know, you got yelled at for playing too much video games. Oh. Now it's, and I listen to Howard Stern. Howard Stern would always, his, he would always say, I used to love watching TV. My parents would yell at me. And he's like, looking back, I would have been better off had they just let me watch more it's, TV. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's funny. You never yeah. know. It's crazy. My son, who's 11 years old, said he has a friend who's 13 who's making a ton of money off oh, of yeah. gaming. And I said, is he in school? He goes, no, mom, he does his homework too. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But he's making, Millions. Yeah, mad Millions. Because what's 13. happening now is the games are sponsoring the kids. Because if you're, if, if this kid has a, is a, has a personality and he's on Twitch and he's got 5 million followers, 
well, if, if the game says, hey, we're launching, you know, uh, video game number two, the, you know, in, in February, you need to start, you know, putting this stuff. We could pay you to put these things in your video and advertise it, talk about it. And it's so easy to it's, do. It's you actually, showed me how easy it is and, to do. And for companies, it's probably cheap advertising. It's cheap. Oh, absolutely. It's probably cheaper to go to an influencer and like that, a kid who's got a Twitch following of a few million people and pay them a million dollars than it is to run a nationally syndicated commercial about a video game. And, and it's take, more effective. Take it even step That's back. It's, it's much cheaper to hire an influencer than an actor to come and do the campaign. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Imagine. And the, That's and, true. And the actor won't have a big of a following as an influencer because the influencer's got all these real people behind them watching them and following them. The actors got fans mm-hmm. who are there for the movie or whatever, but they don't, majority of these actors and actresses, they just opening up social media yeah. Yeah. when already these influencers have millions upon millions of uh, followers. Yeah. So yeah, it's, they're taking over. Go- they're taking over. <laughs> yeah, they, I love it. Going back to, you know, the vision of make, of this, I want to make this into a family business that I can hand down to my kids. Have you, have you kind of wrapped your head around it all? Like how you might do that? Or are you still thinking about how to make that a reality? There are so many because I didn't start this off with just fashion and Mm -hmm. there's so many branches. I've already been offered um, to do a small spec cooking, you know, like series. I've also done, I've also been offered, I'm supposed to speak to somebody. I've also been offered to do something, a campaign for makeup and to put my name on a makeup. So it's, it's something that exactly I have to kind of like touch feel the waters mm-hmm. and see which direction I want to go into. Um, and the reason is because I like to eventually bring one, if not three of the kids on board. Mm-hmm. And if that's the case, I got to find out which niche is the most. Well, you could technically be the face of all three if you wanted to. I mean, think about it. You could be the face of it. And then if you come up with, let's say some kind of, uh, let's call it a cupcake line, right? Whatever. Your daughter could handle the logistical side of that. She could actually go meet with the factories and figure out, okay, you know, how do you produce your product? How's that going to get from point A to the shelves? And right, it's a matter you know, of just uh, and, getting them on board. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then you could slowly you gotta ease get them, them into in front it. of the screen first, yeah. and then get them on board. Well, yeah, you get them on board. You help them build the logistical side of it. You automate it, and then you slowly get them on camera with you. It's kind of like I don't know if you've ever seen it. And the only reason that this is on my head is because I have three kids under the age of five. But Ryan's toy review. Oh, yes. It started out with just Ryan opening toys. And now you look at the videos and there's there's Princess T, which is, you know, his mother it's started so a channel. so cute you know all and this the, stuff. Well, it's because I, w- it's that's been what's playing. It's playing in your brain. It's playing on loops in my house all day. So, but but to your point, the, the mother's got a show, the father's got a show. It, it's, all, it's all revolving around Ryan, right? And, and the whole family's probably making a ridiculous amount of oh, money. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, but in today's world, I mean, with regards to marketing, anyone who opens any kind of business today has to be, it's not so straightforward anymore. It's tough. You got to really be on the cutting edge of this stuff. You know, you, people took it for granted back in the day when it was just like, you know, even real run estate. Run an ad in Newsday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You run mm-hmm. an ad in Newsday or, you know, you make up some flyers and you have like, for example, like an open house and that's the end of it. Yeah. No, no. it's so far from that now. It's like, you will be dead meat if that's all you do. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. One thing that we come across in real estate a lot is a lot of people turn around and say, oh, I'm going with my neighborhood realtor. The only your neighborhood realtor today is like running an ad in Newsday and yes. thinking that a gazillion people are going to see it. It's just not the case. You need people that have reach. And, and I can't tell you how many prospects we come across that they, they almost don't even understand the concept. But look that, what they did. Like even Million Dollar Listing, it's mm-hmm. an actual show based yeah, on Yeah, and now. those like realtors on- are now selling property in Miami, New York City, L.A., they don't, you don't need to be a neighborhood realtor anymore. Exactly. You exactly. need to be, a, it's all about reach. It's not only that, it's about thinking outside the box. Mm-hmm. It's no longer just the regular way of doing things. You got to be a little bit extra. You got to oh, yeah. be out different. there. Yeah, yeah, different. Yeah, and the younger generation who's doing these things is actually selling more real estate than the older generation who is kind of stuck in their ways of just listing things on the MLS and taking that to the bank. So it, it it's it's changing in 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 every world, you know, every vertical. The doctor's offices are now reaching out. Medical offices are reaching out to me. Really? Yeah, really? Yeah. Medical offices, and these are doctors that are a lot older, and they're seniors, and they've been practicing 
any type of field for, I mean, decades. Mm -hmm. And they're reaching out and they're like, you know, we want to get more clients and we want to get more patients. And it could be anything from like laser or whatever. And we need social media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, do know, they want you as like an advisor or they want you as an influencer? No, they want me as an influencer to come in and do a whole campaign for them and stuff. Wow. And it's funny. It's like you specific know, types of doctors. Yeah, or, specific okay. types of yeah. doctors, like you know, women's varicose veins yeah, okay. and and uh, fa uh, facialists and dermatologists and yeah. things like that. Oh yeah. Hold and on. it's yeah, they all want to do media now. Mm -hmm. They all want to so do funny. media. Well, that's smart. That's smart of them. Well, it's because that's what it is. The younger generation doctors are coming out mm -hmm. and they're all using all the social media they platform. It. Exactly. And so they're they're, and their target market is 35 and under. Which is who runs to. Right. to <laughs> which is who's on these platforms. Exactly. That's where everyone's disproportionate attention is. So you got to tap into it. It's so crazy. Let me ask you something. Do you have a, a web? I'm sure you do. Do you have a website? I do have a website. Mm -hmm. I haven't written a blog post in quite some time. I need to get back on it it's just because it's been crazy busy. Um, but I really enjoyed writing. It mm -hmm. kind of taps into that junior managerial skills I yeah. had back um, back in the day um, as being a junior manager at the lit agent. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's stilettofashions.com. You can find me just by putting it in one word, stilettofashions.com, and it's all blog posts and, of course, link the items that are in there. I had um, I had about two years ago an epiphany about it. Like it was a flooding of DMs of about a bunch of moms talking to me about how I had hit a nerve, a good nerve with a bunch of people talking about real life. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was, um, unfortunately there was like a death in the community and mm -hmm. I went on, there was a really young girl and um, I went on there from there. I streamed into bullying and things like that. Mm -hmm. And my DMs got flooded mm -hmm. and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a whole blog post about, you know, just inner, just your inner emotions and being able to be open up and out there and stuff like that. And it became huge. I got so many hits on that. Mm -hmm. And there are also a lot of companies reached out and they said, we saw your blog post. Now to see a blog post mm -hmm. is different than to see an Instagram post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because blog posts, you actually got to go search for me yeah, on yeah, yeah. my website. Well, so the, the reason I asked is so Ron and I used to work in corporate America and we didn't like talking about the future. What's the future going to be? We didn't like that we weren't in control, that the company made the decisions and we were essentially pawns. And that's why we started real estate, our own business. So I was asking you because you're, st you're an influencer, you're in charge, but you're, you're dependent still upon Instagram, YouTube, whatever these platforms, it seems to me the only way to break that dependency is to have a website Absolutely. where you put your content on the website and then maybe some sort of email list or something. So that's why I asked. Absolutely. So when I started Instagram, I think I must have had maybe 200 followers. I hired somebody to help me create a website. Mm -hmm. My husband was like, it's a little too early, don't you think? Right, right. <laughs> and I was like, listen, let me tell you something. If anything, that's the number one thing that I have to get done before anything else. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly why. Because when you have a website of your own, anything flies, mm -hmm. you know, and you right. don't have to worry about algorithm and all this other nonsense mm -hmm. that I found out about later on. Yeah, but yeah. it's your place where your voice comes across and you can pitch anything and you can say anything, you can mm -hmm. do anything and write openly. And I love the fact that you can write freely, like even captions. Like, I mean, there's so much after you scroll, it's like, all right, enough already. What yeah. is this girl saying? Yeah. But if you have a blog I, post. Part of what, what probably made your success with Instagram is your ability to write. Yeah, I would. Listen, and the fact I that think, you did it for years I think, prior. I think everybody can write. It's a matter of just sitting down, putting your thoughts on paper. Mm -hmm. My sister, who's a journalist, has read my blog post and she goes, you're so annoying. And I said, why? She goes, you write the way that you speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and for a journalist, that's like <laughs> drives them crazy. Yeah. Yes. And I said, well, well, that's exactly what it is. When you're reading it, I want you to think that I'm actually speaking mm -hmm. to you. So yeah, my commas may be out of there and, mm -hmm. and that irritates her also considering that I was a lit agent. I was looking for those when I was <laughs> yeah, reading yeah, those yeah. scripts. Um, but if you read my blog posts, it's like I'm you know, I'm sitting there mm -hmm. and I'm speaking to you. Right. Yeah. Which is what people want. That must be really frustrating for journalists in general that all of a sudden it's, it's, it's the same thing. It's bloggers are now, they're kind of like the new journalists. Oh yeah. I've had, also maybe you should do a vlog. <laughs> oh, so I had a crew come over to me and be like, let's do vlogs. And I'm like, all right, listen, there's like, Social media is all There's over so the place. Much, yeah. There's so much. To, I'm like, I'm trying to get this IGTV down pat. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. let's start off with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, vlogging is huge too. That's probably what you should definitely do is just have someone follow you around with a camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need. And needed. then cut it up. <laughs> 
Bravo, Andy Cohen, where are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just limit yeah. the ex- your, right. cut your husband. Well, think about it. Up. You could embed all those on YouTube. You could put the clips on Instagram. You could tie it all together. Yeah, it is. It's social media. But that's media's. a lot. You need someone actually doing all that for you. But, to, it, it, but that's what it is. It's somebody literally following you around. Yeah, yeah. You know? um, but, it, I mean, listen, it's limitless right now. It's social media is everywhere, and it's in every facet. It's a matter of just like tying it all in together. Have you ever had a realtor reach out for any kind of cross marketing opportunity? I did um, about two years ago in Miami. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, oh, actually, back it up in Greece. We went to Greece on a on a trip, just my husband and I. And the hotel actually did. Um, I did a photo shoot for the hotel, and Very they cool. used it for. I mean, it, it wasn't it wasn't spoken of before. It just happens to be when I was there. Mm-hmm. Um, I mentioned to somebody at the front desk that I'm an influencer and I'd like to know if I can, you know, go to a certain part of the hotel that was only open certain hours. And I wanted to go for do a photo shoot. Right. And I said, wait a minute, what do you mean photo shoot? And I said, you know, I'm an influencer. I'm mm-hmm. from the States, this and that. And that was the end of it. Like they said, all right, we want to hire you. We do want to do something with you. And mm-hmm. um, so I did a photo shoot for them and the campaign, they used it. And I had followers wow. that actually went to the hotel afterwards. That's pretty wild. So it was pretty cool. And I've done it for several other hotels afterwards. Mm-hmm. So if you were in real estate, let's just say hypothetically, knowing what you know, having grown the audience to, what, to the extent that you have uh, with your fashion and, and your food and everything, how would you do it in real estate? So definitely the open houses would have to be more than just inviting realtors. It would have to be, I mean, take a, take a page out of that New York uh, million dollar listings, but parties for sure, bringing in people. And then of course, listing it videos, Mm -hmm. huge vlogs, as you would say, getting people in the house Getting people, exactly. Because people, listen, a home is, a house is a house, but you make it a home and people want to, they want to envision it fully furnished. You know, mm-hmm. there used to be back in the day when you look at a house and it was an empty house, you're like, it was cold. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, you know, and people were like, imagine the living room, you know. We're a lot of people don't have exactly. the ability we're, to see themselves Exactly. In it. I'm, and I'm a visual, I'm a big visual person. Mm-hmm. When we're homeowners ourselves. And when we're looking at houses, you know, they were empty houses. And I'm like, oh, imagine the living room here and imagine yeah. the dining yeah. room here. I'm like, I can't imagine. Like, <laughs> you just want to see the stage. I want to see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Definitely staging, definitely making it feel like it's homey and mm-hmm. cozy and definitely inviting people in. And when you take pictures, take pictures with people in there. That's not a bad idea. But that's the truth. Like I know that right now a lot of realtors are hiring models and if not Mm -hmm. models, influencers and stuff and make it look like they're having breakfast at the Mm -hmm. island that you're trying to promote. You know, like have a glass of wine by the wine cellar that you're trying to promote that's in the house. You know, Mm -hmm. the three car garage you have, have some stellar cars out there, you know, have somebody coming out of the car. That's something that no one is doing. Yeah, no, that that's a new concept that would be that that's awesome i think but that's that what it is like make it look like if you're selling especially if you're selling million dollar listings mm-hmm. make it look it. like million dollar listing yeah. you know what i mean yeah. yeah but that's what it is it's yeah it's, listen everything has been revolving now mm-hmm. i'm telling you doctor's offices are yeah, changing i know, <laughs> I know. That's, the, that's the last industry i would have thought be contact i i swear this just happened just a few weeks ago it's probably mostly plastic surgeons no no actually it's not only plastic surgeons it's um um, the other thing is this: some of the plastic surgeons have reached out and they want you to come in and actually get something done, mm-hmm. which I'm like, okay, listen, what are you trying to say? Like, yeah. <laughs> like I can see, like I know Botox is a big thing right, now, right. so I could see Botox right. being a big thing. But and... the other thing is, they just want you to come and like be the spokesperson mm-hmm. for them, so not necessarily yeah. do something there, like get um, a surgical procedure done. But talk about their surgical, mm-hmm. their surgical procedures. Talk about their office space, how cool it is, how clean it is, how young it is, how yeah. you feel. You know, like you're coming in and you'll be well taken care of. So it's not just about going and doing the procedure, but showing off their place. Right, right. Because listen, doctors' offices are a dime and a dozen right now. There's like, there's, yeah. you know. Yeah. But think about it; it's it's pretty cool how yeah. they're tapping into it also now. That's pretty cool. Anyone can. Were you? Let me. Were you always comfortable putting yourself out there? Did it, that that kind of like did that comfort grow? I will blame this on being the middle child. (laughs) Um, I have an older brother and a younger sister and I was just like, all right, I mean, you're busy with him and you're busy with her and I'm just doing my own thing. And Mm -hmm. I was always out there talking to people. Mm -hmm. I never got the concept of don't talk to strangers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, You were a social bug. That's it. And it kind of works. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Being an influencer, I'm like, I'm an open book, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, and nothing is off the table. I get questions asked 
mm-hmm. left and right, some crazy questions I'll share on my Insta stories. Mm-hmm. And of course I'll, I'll hide the person. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the whole reason is to feel like when you have a best friend, don't you talk to her about everything? Oh, yeah. And that's what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Interesting. So listen, we're actually coming up on a hard stop here because Mike's got his son's breasts. However, <laughs> however, this was a very interesting conversation. I would like for you to come back. I would at love some to come back because we should be bouncing ideas off each other. We should be talking about this stuff. I mean, this is the future, right? So, uh, if, do you have anything that you want to promote before we hop off? Yes, myself. Yourself. <laughs> Okay, you guys so should definitely f- check out my um, blog. It's stilettofashions.com and check me up on uh, social media. Um, hit me up with any DMs, anything in specific you want me to talk about or touch up on. And um, yeah. I'm what's just, your What's your handle on Instagram? Stiletto Fashions, one word, S-T-I-L-E-T-T-O, Fashions, one word. There you go. There awesome. you go. All right. We are the Passion Lands Lotta team at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Lafayette International Realty. If you ever want to get in touch with us to buy, sell, or rent a home, it's 516-888-9711. That's 516-888-9711. Uh, thank you so much for coming, Jessica. And real, we guys. will thank you. be in touch. Thank you.